Hey, Tom, what does the market reaction or lack thereof of this data tell you? Well, it's interesting because we've actually seen the 10 years sort of make a bottom a couple of weeks ago. We've seen crude oil start to rally off a of bottom of, of August 4th. And today's data, the China data, the housing data, um, uh, the empire number all point to uh, a weakening set. And, you know, crude rolls up over quite quickly, uh, the 10 year yield comes back in. So, yeah, it just shows the volatility really that yeah. we're faced with currently. So how fragile do you think this market is, Tom? If we get more of this, and there's plenty of data still to come this week, bit of Fed speak, Fed speak mixed in as well, how quickly could things change? Well, I, I think the potential for change is there. We've come a long way. Um, uh, you know, roughly 23% NASDAQ, you know, 16, 17% S&P off the lows. And so that some of the sentiment that was overwrought has connect, corrected in the market. Um, and we get, start to enter now a seasonally tough period for the market. Mm -hmm. We have a Fed that's going to start full QT next month. We don't know how that will play out in the market. It's, it's going to be new. Um, and then, again, some of the sentiment numbers have really come back fully corrected. Right, Tom. But, you know, the VIX is at 20. And I right. hear you. Like, I hear you. Guy and I talk about that stuff all the time. The data says one thing. Markets do something different. Bed, bath, and beyond. Of what was 200 percent, Guy, right. that you said uh, in just a few weeks? To, right, exactly. So the, and are okay. we too complacent then here, or are we fully priced? Right. So if we just kind of look at 2022 and how to deal with the VIX, there's only one, you know, Friday and Thursday, we had our first consecutive VIX closes under 20 since mid-April. The mid-April closes under 20 coincided with, you know, the market top at that point and, and then the run to the June lows. So, you know, just observing market behavior in 2022, consecutive closes under 20, probably a sign to be a little more cautious rather than get on the gas. Um, you know, as far as Bed Bath and other meme stocks, uh, you know, that basket has actually bottomed in, in May and is now up 60% off the lows. Um, I can't explain to you why Bed Bath <laughs> was up 15% on 10 million shares pre market, enough. other than there's some froth that's re entered the market, whether it's through those stocks. We had a couple of cr crazy yep. Chinese IPOs in the last couple of weeks that are inexplicable. We had a Chinese stock become the 13th most valuable company in the world, and no one really knew what they did or where it came from. So there's some signs of fraud that have crept back in. So, Tom, do you think the pain has been felt yet or understood yet? I was talking about this a little bit earlier on the program. Are we still in the Wiley Coyote moment? Yeah, we've had a little bit yeah. of a correction down to the lows. But do we still understand the implications, the impact that Fed tightening is going to have? So if you listen to Mike Wilson, who published uh, in mm -hmm. the last day, he's he's of the view that we are at the point where we had pretty much a garden variety bear market rally. I, I also noted the comments uh, late in the week from Michael Burry of uh, the big short fame, who pointed out that, you know, in bear market rallies, he looked at the periods of 29 to 32 and 2000, 2002, the average rally in NASDAQ was 23.7%, just about what we hit at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. But we also had two 40% rallies and a 50% rally in 2000, 2002. Ultimately, those failed and we went to new lows. So, Tom, then I think it's, it's important to look then at who's been buying this, irrespective of the data. And I've seen so many notes out about this. Retail traders, short covering, hedge funds, uh, CTAs, trend followers, quants, they had to readjust their position quickly to follow the trend, et cetera. A, do you buy those arguments? And B, if it's true, is that part of it over? Well, one would think parts of that are over. For instance, this weekend we saw from Goldman Sachs Prime Broker uh, the rolling four-week data of short books covering was actually the third highest cover rate in the last decade. Yeah. So that short component in terms of hedge funds has adjusted back. We've seen the national uh, NAIIM numbers go from that extreme low in 20 back to middle of the fairway 70. We've seen AAI weekly data in both bulls and bears crack back into a normal range. So a lot of that's come out.
Tom, if the Fed goes too hard and the housing market cracks, what are we looking at? Well, I think we have to think about uh, that multiples contract again. Um, you know, interestingly enough, uh, quietly, the S&P, uh, uh, overall earnings picture estimates have come down a little bit in the last six weeks. Um, about 130 basis points for this year and about 130 basis points for next year. Um, I read an uh, a interview this weekend that Bloomberg published with Lisa Shallett, who mm -hmm. is the Morgan Stanley Wealth Management CEO, and she said, look, we're actually pricing in 10 to 15 percent earnings contraction next year. People think we're really bearish. Well, the fact is, in 91, 2001, and the great financial crisis, Profitability draw, drawdown was between 35 and 60 percent, and the, really the market is looking past that at this point in time.